Welcome back to another video. Actually, this will be the final video uh, for detection and response. Uh, in this video, I'll be going over examining alerts, logs, and rules with Suricata in particular. So as far as what I'm about to get into, previously I, I talked about in the series about packet analysis and the basic syntax and components of IDS, right, or intrusion detection systems, uh, signatures, and rules, and things of that nature, right? I also talked about uh, how to examine a pre-written signature and its log output in Suricata. Um, well, maybe not Suricata, uh, but in a, in a Suricata adjacent as far as other things I've talked about. Now, Suricata, which is an open source, right, intrusion detection system, intrusion prevention system, and network analysis tools, all of the above, right? What I'll be doing is I'll be exploring more about Suricata alerts and logs, including the general process of rule creation. So what the tool what this tool does it monitors network interface through has the ability to rather and applies rules to the packets that pass through the interface and suricata definitely determines whether each packet should generate an alert or be dropped rejected or allowed to pass through the interface now source and destination networks must be specified in the suricata configuration and custom rules can also be written to specify which traffic should be processed now what i'll do i'll examine a rule and I'll practice using Suricata, right, to trigger alerts on the network traffic. So I'll also analyze some, uh, some log outputs like fast.log and e.json. Uh, it's gonna help me get to the bottom of some of the alerts and logs generated by Suricata. So let's paint the scenario. Let's say I'm a security professional, right, who must, I am looking to monitor network traffic on my employer's network, on my enterprise network. Right. And I'm required, of course, to configure Suricata and, and use it to trigger alerts. I'll do a few things, actually. I'll explore some custom rules, then I'll run it uh, with the custom rule to trigger it. Then I'll examine the output logs and um, in a fast.log uh, file that I mentioned prior. And then I'll examine some additional output that Suricata generates in the standard uh, log file. So um, just, just the, the general things I'll, I'll, be, I'll be doing. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I could say a bit more, but I just want to get to work. So let's start with examining a custom rule in Suricata. So the analyst uh, directory that I'm in contains a file, right, that the network, uh, that defines the network traffic rules with Suricata captures. So I'll be exploring the composition of the rule defined in the file. So let's uh, concatenate some custom uh, custom rules here. All right, alerts, protect transfer. All right, so, all right, I, I can also, I could have also used the, the less command as well. Uh, it can be used to like read file content, from, you know, one page at a time, unfortunately, and makes it use, useful for reading lengthy output if I got something a bit more than what I want. But that's it, but, um, but back to this, so the command returns, as you can see, the rules, right, for the output um, in, in the shell. So it, it consists, looks like, of three components, an action, a header, and um, and some rule options, it looks like. So I'm just going to examine each component in more detail. So the action is the first part of the signature, as we can see here, right? And it just determines the action um, it, to take if all conditions are met, right? So actions differ across network intrusion detection systems, uh, rule languages, but some common actions are like alert, drop, pass, or reject. And using this example here, right, um, the file contains a single alert uh, as the action, and the alert keyword instructs to alert on selected network traffic, and the IDS will actually inspect the traffic packets and send out an alert in case it, it actually matches. So, not going to get too much, uh, too much for technical into it, but um, actually, you know what? I can. This is the video for that. But uh, so the pass action also allows um, if we did get a, if it was to be passed, right? It just allows the traffic exactly what it sounds like to pass through the network interface, and it can be used to override other rules as well. An exception to a draw rule can be made with the pass rule. Like for example, let's say the following rule has an identical signature to the previous example that we have here, except that it singles out a specific IP address to allow only traffic uh, uh, from that address to pass, right? 
And, and, and a rule order normally to the order in which the rules are evaluated by Suricata, they're loaded in an order which they are defined in the configuration file. Uh, but Suricata does process, it does process rules in like a different default order sometimes like pass, drop, uh, reject, and alert. But nonetheless, the next part of the signature is the header, right? And it defines the signature's uh, network traffic. Right, which includes attributes like uh, protocols, which as you can see here, architect transfer protocol, right? Um, source and destination IP addresses, right? And uh, our, as I mentioned, ours is HTTP as far as the protocol. It determines that the rule only applies to HTTP traffic, which is, as you can see, it's not secure, right? You want HTTPS and not HTTP. Uh, and the parameters to this protocol, as, as we can see here, are home, uh, right, uh, home underscore net, any, you know, external net, any. And the arrow really indicates the direction of the traffic coming from the home network and going to the destination IP address, which is an external network, right? And the home net uh, is really a suricata variable defined in ETC, mm -hmm. suricata typically, uh, suricata.yaml. And that I can use in, in my rule definitions. Mm -hmm as like a place of the typically for my local or home network to identify traffic that connects to or from systems within an organization um, that you're either working for or your, your organization as far as your enterprise. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, you also have uh, your, your rule options as well. And sometimes the many available rule options allow to customize signatures with additional parameters. So configuring role options can help narrow down network traffic so I can find exactly what I'm looking for. And I'm just gonna keep it at that. Again, I could go on and on and on about this, but I'll just continue with the actual, what I'm actually here to do. So what I'm gonna do now is trigger a custom rule in Suricata. So now that we've talked about somewhat uh, the composition of uh, the custom uh, Suricata rule, I'm now going to trigger this rule and examine the alert logs that Suricata generates. So let's do this here. I always spell something wrong. All right. So it looks like there is a total of zero. So before uh, running Suricata, right, technically there is no, there aren't any files, right, in the directory. So, uh, so what I did was, so I'm just going to run um, the, the, the rule, the using the custom rule is just going to run Suricata. So let's do packet control, custom rules. Okay. Perfect, so now this starts the Suricata application and processes the sample PCAP file using the rules in a custom rules file. So it's gonna return, uh, or has returned rather, an output stating how many packets were processed, mm -hmm. um, which is about 200, uh, were processed by Suricata. All right, and I'm using sudo because it's required to process, at least in this environment, uh, to process packet capture files with Suricata. And I'm only saying this because it's not necessarily, um, it's not required in a real world environment. It's long story short. So I can, I'm going to further a few other options in the command, right? So this, this option, right, just specifies an input file to mimic network traffic in this case, uh, the sample PCAP file. And what the S does for us is it, it, uh, it instructs Suricata to use the rules uh, defined in a custom rules file. And then the K, lastly, it just instructs Suricata to disable all uh, checks and checks. So, uh, and checksums, what they are, there's a, just a way to detect if a packet has been modified in transit. Because I'm using network traffic from a sample packet capture file, I won't need to, you know, Suricata to check the integrity of the checksum, of course. Uh, but nonetheless, um, let's take a look at listing the files in the folder again. So let's do. All right, oh, okay, so we have quite a few. Well, not quite a few, but total is 16, but it initially shows us four. All right, so there are four files, right, in, in our directory. 
or at least the Siricata directory, including the fast log that I mentioned prior and the eJSON files that I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to examine those files in particular in detail. So let's start with the concatenation first of the fast um, the fast log. <laughs> so let's do Okay. All right, so we got the output here, right? So it looked like each line or each entry, it just, in this file, looked like it corresponds to the alert generated by Suricata. Now, when a process is a packet that meets the conditions of an alert generating rule, each alert line includes the message, right? That, that identifies the rule that triggered the alert as well as the source, destination, and direction of the traffic. So now I'm just going to uh, take a look at the new JSON file as well. So let's actually, you know what? I'll just take the lady away. Hmm. Okay. All right. Pretty much looks like it's just raw data, really, in the file. And there's a lot of data returned. It's not necessarily easy to understand in this format. So I'm just going to use the JQ command, which I'll explain in a second, because uh, this is a tool very useful for processing. I'm just going to use that to display the entries um, in an improved format. So let's start with Okay, uh, not the best, but definitely a lot better. We can understand something, right? So, uh, so I, what I did was with using the JKey command, it just processing the JSON data, right? However, a full explanation of its capabilities is outside the scope of what I want to discuss at the moment. Don't want to make this, you know, any longer than than uh, the need be. But nonetheless, uh, let's see. Severity. Now, what I'm what I'm going to do is now use the JQ command to just extract specific event data from the JSON file. So, Okay, let's see what happened. Ah, uh, I see. I see, I see. As I always say, it's usually user error most times. So it's not like not defined point one. Okay, compile error. So let's see what happened here. So let me copy it. Sometimes that might work. And then Pick all this out here. Okay. Well, nonetheless, so um, now with the JQ command uh, did again this time is it, it extracted the field specified in a list to from the square brackets, right, from the JSON payload, right? So 
not going to get too much into that again. So what we have here, right, it's just an example of the, it's, it's an output, right, from the from the command that I placed in. And what happened was um, now when I can, it allows me to uh, get to the next point of displaying all event logs related to a specific uh, file from the eJSON file. It's a bit convoluted, but trust me, um, I'll get to where I'm trying to go. So let's do this here. Let's see. I'll do this again. There it is. Let's try it again. Let's see, it worked last time. So let's see if it works this time. Well, I'm trying to get to the network flow. Let's take a look here. Hmm. All right, so. Uh, let me try one of these here. I don't want to put my traffic folks on my mouse, so I'm just going to put the space. I understand. Okay. Perfect. So I got it to show. So it just showed me just the time flow, right? Um, or the network flow, referring to a sequence of packets between a source and destination uh, that share common characteristics, uh, like an IP address protocol, as you can see here, uh, right? And it, and it can help a security professional to understand the behavior of network traffic to identify and analyze threats. And Suricata just assigns a unique flow ID which is what I was missing. I just placed an X there from uh, just habit. And I forgot that I literally did right before uh, uh, obtain these for the purpose of me being able to complete this particular, uh, this last thing here. But nonetheless, I uh, got to figure it out uh, as, as usual, my figuring things out. And this also brings me to uh, figuring out that this is the conclusion of the video. And just for a brief recap, uh, I've demonstrated practical uh, experience with custom creating custom rules and running them in Suricata, monitoring traffic captured in a packet capture file, uh, and examine the fast.log and the e.json input as well. And uh, just, you know, all everything and, and then some. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, till the next video, well, this would be, uh, well, the next video would be another series. Uh, stay curious, stay secure.